And good morning, everyone. Good to see you here. Uh, my name is Paul Tranny, and uh, just waiting for everything to, uh, yeah, work magically. What's up, Henry? Uh, good to see you. Give me one second as I load this in and I say hello to everyone. Uh, we're going to be doing some elegant line design. We're going to be working largely on the iPad as well as uh, on the desktop. So, uh, awesome. Cool. Okay, there you are. There everybody is. Sorry, my shadows are kind of weird. I had fun with the lights. Hopefully that's okay. I've shaved. I'm like a new person here. It's crazy. Uh, but welcome. Uh, this is going to be good. Caroline, glad you're into it. I'm going to have fun with this. Afroja, good to see ya. Sam Peterson in the house. So uh, let's just kind of jump on over if we could. Uh, this is, of course, Illustrator. Bam! On the iPad, right? So this is what I'm going to work in. I want to welcome you. Uh, I look like an that is, that's kind of true. I think, uh, Sean, you nailed it. I have like, looks like an axe murderer. It's probably, this doesn't help. I could take this off. Is this less, less axe murdery? <laughs> oh, having fun with lights. Okay, so here I am, Illustrator on the iPad. I wanna welcome everybody. Um, uh, yeah, so let's uh, just jump into this. And uh, I do have a couple things going on here. I'm just gonna work in one layer. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, and honestly, I'm largely going to be using the pencil, so hopefully that works for you. What's up, Michelle? Good to see you here. Uh, so yeah, lumberjack skills. Speaking of lumberjack, again, we can just kind of get you familiar with Illustrator on the iPad. I can jump in, right, go ahead and round that, go like that, and I can make, say for instance, and again, not to be too morbid, I could use the pen tool right, to jump in and make something kind of disturbing in this case, as you can see, right? So I'm just kind of linking all of those. We have all these various points, as you can see, and uh, we can dive on into it, right? Double tap to convert these points, uh, either bezier or remove the beziers just by tapping again, right? I actually want these to go straight out because I want it to go straight out. I can do zero degrees tap on that one let's go straight out zero degrees like so you get the idea okay line those up like so and I would do a lot more with this but again since you since somebody did mention that I will jump in let's just curve this a little bit on the ends just to make it look a little bit more friendly right and then we have our lovely shoo, line work all right let's get into what we're actually going to do because if you've probably seen i don't know if you're following me on um uh instagram or anything you can kind of see what i've been working on so it's along the lines of this so let me go ahead and show you really fast now that we're kind of warmed up and i like to do that typically just kind of get warmed up with um good old Illustrator on the iPad. So let me just switch over back to, this is on my desktop, by the way. So we're gonna do some stuff like this. So this is the goal, kind of like this work you could see right here, okay? So that's the goal. Hopefully that uh, you're into that. Good morning, Marsha. So again, and if we have time, you know what, we're even gonna animate it. So we could do some fun things like this, what you're seeing right here, okay? So hopefully you're into that. I think it's kind of cool and it's really easy um, ooh, there might be a little delay in audio. Oh, darn. Check, check. Okay, I will, I will fix that for my stream uh, later. T like, I'll fix that for my stream. Sorry if that's a bother. But, uh, yeah, sometimes there is a delay. Let me check everything. Stream is healthy. Let's move on. Let's go back to our iPad, right? So here we are. Of course, we're not going to make any crazy lumberjack thing. I'm going to jump in here, delete that. I'm just going to turn on some images. So I've actually just imported a bunch of images, right, that we can see right in here that we can kind of work with, okay? So we can go to 
any image that you want. Of course, I could go to CC my libraries. I'll go into say nature or people, import those photos, and this is where we're gonna start. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, what I'll probably do initially is take this whole layer and drop down the opacity a little bit. And we're just gonna use this to trace. So do that with anything. Lock down that layer on a new layer. We'll select the pencil and we'll just have at it, shall we? All right. So jumping in here, let's select color black. Boom, baby. Let's get rid of that. And let's start dialing this in. My smoothing for this is essentially um, sort of like uh, about in the middle, but you're gonna change this based on the amount of detail. So for the large curves, you could drag this up to the top. Uh, if you want more detail, you're gonna bring it down to the middle or all the way down to the bottom. That's gonna give you almost too many points, um, but it's just something that you're gonna have to play with. I typically would start in the middle, right? And we'll jump in and we'll just start having some fun. Now, this is also considered like a, um, uh, it's, I want to have like one continuous line as much as possible. So let's just jump in. Let's just draw out like that, right? So I want to have one continuous line. I could always continue these lines, but this is kind of like just considered a fun little sketch. Let's actually remove that. This one's going to be a little bit more tricky. Let's go up, let's go over like that, okay? So there we have that. We'll go right over here. Let's draw out that curve like so. We can continue this line. So since it's still selected, I can go into this part right here, go up and draw over and then in like so. Just hinting at that eye, okay? Same thing for this one. Select that line, go back to my pencil, come in and just go zoop, zoop. Something kind of like that. I'm just hinting at the eye. Okay, so right over here, even for this part, zoop, zoop like so you do have to add your own sound effects right and this illustration is a little bit more complex but let's just have some fun with outlining those shadows and have a good time today as i start to just create some line work just really quickly continuing the lines where i need them right and these are going to have those like big curves like that those curls Let's undo that a little bit. Let's go down. Let's kind of go in like this. Loops, loops, like so, like so. This one might turn out okay. I actually have not done this one before. Continuing that like so. All right. Hello everyone, Alexander. As you can see, you get some weird points in here, right? We can select our direct selection tool, click on that direct selection tool, and uh, you get this lovely little, let me kind of zoom out. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm still an illustrator on the iPad, okay? Just magnifying this some, and I can remove points right in here without sort of destroying the curve. So let's do that, let's remove this one. Let's take this one here. Uh, this same menu is off to the side as well. So if I click right there, we can see what all of these little symbols mean. And this heads up display, it's basically saying, hey, you know what? This is a smart delete that will remove the point without destroying the shape, which is kind of cool. Good job, uh, you like big curves, huh? So do I, let's just get a hint of an ear. Uh, gesture drawing, that's the word I was trying to think of. It's kind of like gesture drawing, right? We're getting the hint of a person. Here's this lovely flowing sort of uh, garment that the person has on. I don't know who this is. I don't, I should know this, but I don't. I don't know uh, what statue this is. And I apologize. There we go. Done, done. <laughs> All right, can we do this one? What do you guys think? Again, gesture drawing. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Here we go, let's go to this guy. Let's go to this man, look, he's so cool. Let's outline him. Uh, let me just check. My stream is healthy, but there might be a little bit of a delay with my voice, uh, and I apologize. 
So let's take this man's profile. This is going to work out really well. Roll down, in. A lot of times I'll grab the nose. I can continue since it's this person's beard, like so, kind of like that. Let's grab the eye. Oops. Undo. Zoop. Zoop. Like that. Kind of like that. And you'll see you get these weird spikes sometimes, especially if you're doing these sharp corners, right? I've made this shape. Let's undo that. But um, you have the opportunity to sort of round the um, corners and the ends. So let's just jump into that. All right, oh, that's some delicious coffee. Right in here, it actually works for this eyelash, by the way, but at least for these ends, I want to cap them so they're rounded. So the cap just needs nice to be nice and smooth and rounded. Oh, hello. Let's undo that. Zoop. And zoom back in like so. All right, he's going to look dead in the eyes, right? Because there's no pupil here, and this typically happens. Right? We'll go in and we'll select this. We have this point that I want to continue right here. Zoop. We'll bring that down. And I think in this case, you know what? Let's go ahead and round uh, all of the sides. And there we have that. Okay, you guys get the idea. Let's move on. I don't want to repeat myself too much, right? Right, we could have fun with the beard. Zzz, squiggly lines, squiggly lines. Roll that right into the ear, zoop, right around like so. Another thing people will do is they will actually keep this uh, imagery right in here for the background at 100% but change your line color. So that's something I can think about doing as well, locking that down. Going back in here, selecting this line color, change that to red, and uh, this is just a different way to work as well as you can see. Uh, all right. Yeah, what is this guy's job, huh? That's a good question. What, what craft beer company does he work for, huh? <laughs> the only reason I'm, I'm saying that is like, I'm just, I admire his beard. I'm just jealous of his beard. That's the only reason I'm picking on this guy. Cause I'm like, oh man, I can't, I can't, I can't grow an awesome beard like that. I got beard jealousy. Anyone else, anyone else get like beard jealous? Is that a thing, huh? Like that. Okay, we don't want to have too many lines, but let's continue this one right over here and get this body started. Like so. More beard action, maybe, maybe not. All right. All right, folks. Let's have some fun today. How's everybody doing? Oh yeah, he's a glass blower. Or I, I'd like to think he probably makes like artisanal ice, right? He makes artisanal ice that uh, that people would end up buying for like eight dollars a cube. And you know who was one of those people that would buy those ice cubes? Me. I would buy those ice cubes. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? It's shaped like a cool octagon. Oh, I totally want that. All right, so we kind of have the essence of what he looks like. Let's turn that off. That looks pretty good. I actually like that. Uh, honestly, you could make the mistake of spending too much time on this stuff. He builds Bisto candles. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's turn this on. What else we got in here? We could do, we could do her really fast. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this. One more really fast let's just jump in oh, i don't know why my screen keeps timing out let's go in here undo undo yep 
Yeah, this one's okay. I, I don't think I'm gonna spend too much time on that one. I think we have enough because, check it out. I actually have done this a couple times already, as you can see. We will turn off that background, but here's just a number of these illustrations. All done the same way, look at this guy. Again, another person. Ah, oh, so jealous of your beard and that, just got that cool look staring out that window, like, oh, man, what's what's gonna happen today in the Anvil Factory? The Anvil Factory is just him, by the way. But you can see a number of these. This is the one we worked on earlier. This one, the line thickness is a little bit different. If we go in here, we just crank that up. Typically, we could drag on any one of these numbers to make them thicker or thinner, or you could tile that in, tap there on any uh, dialogue, and you will, can go ahead and make that uh, two point or whatever you want. But I'm able to dial that in, that looks good. Boom, cool. So you can kind of see where everything, at least how everything was made. Farah, do you like it? So yeah, and we could get artistic with this, right? These are all just fun little line drawings. I could still use the basic shapes, right? Uh, a lot of times when you do, you know, a, a drawing with this loose line work, they could tend to float. So what you can do is always drop in. Why am I not? There we go. Two fingers will undo, by the way, but we can always add sort of a, uh, you know, nice little circle or something like that. Let's delete right there, boom, uh, just for fun. All right, you guys get the idea. I don't know what else you wanna know about Illustrator on the iPad, by the way. So like, as if I double tap, I go into isolation mode and I can start to manipulate all these points. I've kind of gone through all this. A couple things that I probably wanna do is um, cut this. Now I could actually add, I can go to the pen tool Double tap, pen tool. Oh, maybe I cannot. I wanted to add a point there, but if I wanted to adjust a line, I don't have to do it based on the Bezier points. I can actually just click on that line and pull that out like so. So I don't have to use the Bezier points if I wanted to manipulate this. But ultimately what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a, a, um, a, uh, uh, a point on that line, you know, and I wanna play with this some more. So ultimately I need to get this to my desktop, by the way, just so I can play with it some more. Uh, Lucy Goosey one's the best. Yeah, I'm totally curious as to which ones you think is the best. But there we are, we have those line drawings done. We'll just click back, right? There it is, it's just called line drawings. I'll go to my desktop, right? And uh, we will see it on my desktop and we'll kind of continue some of this work. And we're really gonna play with these lines, right? So we essentially used the Apple Pencil and Illustrator on the iPad to um, uh, do just like the, the natural drawing work that we needed to do. But now here I am on my desktop, by the way, launching Illustrator and here I am Illustrator on the desktop. With that same illustration, all that fun stuff. Cool. Boom, here we are. All this gorgeous line work that I can play with, right? You can see them all in here, right? Uh, and we can do a number of things with them in here, because let's take this guy, for instance. Right, he looks pretty good. He's a pretty simple line drawing, and I absolutely love this elegant line sort of design style. It looks really cool. But we can make this look a little bit more organic, right? So I'll just select all of these lines, and we'll go up here. This is the width profile clicking right in here, and I'll select this third one, which with profile two, selecting that, and we've just added variance to that line, as you can see. Uh... Oh, by the way, oh, Caroline, you've seen people selling these kind of portraits on Instagram. Uh, yeah, and you can see that like from a photo, this took like five minutes, right? So it doesn't take long. To see what we've done with these various, line widths right in here 
that we can now vary because we could always zoom in here and we'd use the width tool which is just amazing typically if I wanted this side to be a little stronger since it's his shoulder I can use the width tool you can see it right over here ah, there it is jump in here and make that sort of thicker um, one thing you'll notice let's see if we zoom in even more is Uh, as I roll over this line, it starts to highlight it, right? So we can actually see how it highlights right there, right? I can click and drag, and obviously it's projecting what, uh, what it will look like. And there we have it. You guys get the idea. Anywho. All right. Uh, so again, we can have a lot of fun with this. So many things we can do with this. Ah, oh, so many things. We can think about colorizing this. We can think about animating it. I want to animate this, by the way. So again, I, I thought we'd take things to the next level and do something like this. So hopefully that's okay, because it's a really easy to do. But once you have that line drawing done, hey, you could have so much fun with it. Right, one thing I think about is like, um, could I colorize it? Do I put a um, sort of a black circle behind him, right, and highlight just him as a silhouette that might work uh let's take this line first and let's crank up this size right and crank up the size we're gonna make it a little bit thicker and we'll go into the properties for this line and ultimately we're gonna add a fun little gradient so again we're just gonna play with this oh i don't really have any swatches i'll throw this gradient on it really fast there it is and change the color. Wait for it, folks. Pink. There we go. Um, yeah. But what I like that the... Um, any stroked line can do is we can go ahead and add that gradient along the stroke. So that's what's happening. It's adding it from blue to uh, pink along that stroke. And even right here, we can apply that gradient along the stroke here uh, within the stroke. Uh, and then right over here, we have across the stroke. So you're going to get three different looks depending on which one you pick, right? And again, this isn't really doing it any favors. I get it. Let's kind of move on, shall we? Okay, so here's, let's do some more fun things. Can we, do you guys mind? Huh, we're experimenting, right? And uh, let's take another one again. Here's our original. Here's the second one, right? We'll make the line a little bit thicker, right? And this time, uh, rather than making them all one gradient, which kind of works, I want to colorize each stroke differently. Actually, can I do that, I guess? No, oh, I can't. I, I, it would be a random swatches fill. All right. I was just thinking through some things, guys. Anyways, the other option is just like colorizing each line and going through the look that way. But let's kind of move on. Can, shall we? Shall we move on? Shall we animate this? Let's animate this. Okay, folks. guys ever just like sometimes you will get sucked into just doing work and not not really uh considering whether it's a good idea or not i get stuck just doing things and not stepping back and saying hey is this a good idea um all right so uh cool so there he is a number of him there she is this is awesome right this would make a beautiful silhouette Oh man, let's just make this happen, Paul. Make it happen. Uh, da, 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 uh, shortcut key, let's just go ahead and hide artboards. Right, there we go, here she is. Right. I'm just gonna have some fun, guys. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Wait for it. Uh, pen tool. Let's just go ahead and join those like that. Right in here, we got some fun stuff happening that we actually need to get rid of. Okay, so anytime you have a shape and you, this this time I just wanna fill it, okay? So uh, we could do that a number of ways, but right in here we have the blob brush. So you can take the blob brush, use my uh, closing bracket, open that up, right? Make it larger, right? And just scrub over that eye, right? I don't have to manipulate those points. I could just kind of roll over that and it adds to the shape. Right, so that's all I'm doing in this case, using the blob brush, right? Selecting that content, and then right in here, same thing. Let's just go ahead and shoo, like so. In fact, getting rid of lines entirely. I could jump in and get rid of those lines. Right in here, let's grab that. Increase the size of the brush. Oops. There we are. Yeah, that looks fine. Done and done. We made our silhouette from that original. Here it is. Let's kind of move it off to the side. We can see these number of lines that we don't need. We can take that. Let's go ahead and grab a circle. An ellipse. Zoop. There it is. Drop it right there. Make it a little larger. Send it to the back. Command shift. Uh, and we'll watch it move, by the way. Do you guys know a lot of these shortcuts between Illustrator and Photoshop are the same? So we could do uh, shift command, uh, close it, or excuse me, opening bracket, we'll move it to the bottom. Closing bracket, we'll move it to the top. Bam, bam. You can't really tell what's going on, probably because it's a color. So let's just do that, right? So we could just play with that stacking order. Again, on top, bottom, on top, bottom, right? I just throw that in the back. Let's just go ahead and make that black. Let's make this white. Right. Bring this down like so. All right, Paul, there's no time. Grab this. Wait, what just happened to my light? My light's like, uh, there we go. You're back. Uh, nope, it is not back. Let's drag that over. Bring it to the top. Command shift, uh, opening bracket. Closing bracket, bringing it to the top, and now we have this illustration. Cool. All right, uh, you guys get the idea. A couple different versions. I'm I opt for simplicity. The more you can simplify, the better off you will be, right? So, again, with this one, what what could we not do on Illustrator for the iPad currently? Well, we uh, we could cut it, by the way. So we could use the scissors and chop it there, bam, and chop it over here, bam, right? Um, but we couldn't add points along that same line, uh, which is weird. So again, here's this one. So let's have some fun with this. Let's take this. We're gonna we're gonna sort of take all these layers, copy it. You guys ready for this? Uh, make them all and let the art director sort them out. Oh yeah. Do you guys hate it when like you're kind of working on something? And then you'll have an art director that's like, you, like you haven't you, you have an art director that provides a very easily like suge easy suggestion, and you're kind of like, hey, for one, I'm still working on this. Two, yeah, if you give me a second and allow me to step back, I probably would have noticed the same thing. So basically, I'm defending myself because sometimes I mess up, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, I should have, I I knew that. Do you ever feel like saying, I knew that? Let's jump in here. Let's add a new composition. This is, we're in After Effects. So again, we're just gonna have fun with this. Um, I'm gonna use something. So first off, you could just go ahead and import your um, Illustrator file. I'm not gonna, I mean, I could do that, but it's just really straightforward and, you know. And quite frankly, I have everything on one artboard. Like, look at how crazy everything is. This is like all my stuff, right? So I really just want to take this illustration and push it. And let's make sure all the lines are the same thickness. Okay, looks like they are. Uh, I want to take this and I actually want to just push it to 
um, After Effects. And I've talked about this before. I don't know if I've had a chance to uh, use it lately. I think I ran out of time last time, but I'm gonna use something called Overlord. So Overlord just allows you to easily push content. Here it is, boop. It is uh, an extension or a plugin to Illustrator and After Effects. As soon as have you, you have it installed, so I have Overlord installed uh, in Illustrator and then also in After Effects, okay? So I have my empty document open. I have Illustrator right here. And what does it say right here? We'll go to this first button. Push selection to After Effects. Hey, that sounds like a great idea. Boom. Pushing it to After Effects, it actually pushes it to After Effects. You actually don't see it, and this is just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, it actually positioned it like up here, right? So uh, just kind of based on my artboard. But here it is. Here's my uh, lovely, um, lovely illustration. Okay, let's make this a little larger. There we are. Let's do this a little larger, 1600 by 1500. There we go, something kind of like that. But what it did is it brought in everything as individual lines, as we can see here, right? Here's all these individual, oops, let's move it down. Individual lines, so as I select them, we can see this topmost one. Turning that off, we can see that that's that circle. Okay, so that's layer 13. That's actually sort of a, a vector layer in After Effects. So the nice thing about this is we can start to play with the animation. All right. <laughs> oh, I love George Carlin. All right, so here's the line. Here's all this lovely line work. Here it is down here. It's called layer 13. I could rename this circle if I want to, but you guys get the idea. Twirling down, this is a little After Effects and I get it. Uh, ooh, I still have so, I have so much time. This is great. Let me check. Oh, and I gotta make sure I'm not in the way, folks. Let's just move me across the screen and make me a little smaller. I usually run out of time, so I'm so excited about this. This is fun for me. All right, let's move me over. There I am, off to the side. So here we are, we could see, now I can kind of zoom in on this. On this side, we have our, you know, our, our circle, you know, that we made in Illustrator. You get the idea. There we go. Our circle that we made in Illustrator. Right, there it is. Cool, cool. Control down, we can see, oh, there's our lovely path, our stroke, right? As I take a look right in here, right, we can see the stroke uh, with the color, all that fun stuff. If I decide to change the color, let's just change it to uh, sort of a pink, as you can see, right? We've changed the color, changed the size, all that fun stuff. So again, it's nice that this is a vector and I can change it all we want. All right, let's do this. Steve, what's up? Sarah, how are you guys doing? The coffee's kicking in. All right, so let's change this back to black. And let's do the fun thing that we want to do, folks. Let's take her, let's say for any one of these lovely shapes. Maybe it is this, this circle that we just made, okay? beautiful. We want to animate it, okay? Because right now it's not doing anything. That's what we're doing in After Effects. We want to be able to animate this over time. So uh, right over here, we'll see for my line, the contents we can add when to uh, start and end that path. So this is all you need to know. I know this is a design masterclass, but hey, you, this is, uh, what isn't design? This is awesome. Okay, so right in here, trim paths. That's what you need to remember. Go to this little add button. I know it's really small. Click add. Yeah, you can add an ellipse in here and all that fun stuff, but in here, trim paths. We'll go ahead and select trim paths. Boom, there it is. Here's our trim paths like so, okay? For trim paths, you have a start and you have an end. Just play with those. Right, we'll just kind of, and actually, you know what, I'm gonna crank up the size of this 
line. Here we go. And let's move this down. Let's try to, the big problem is like getting everything in view. So you can see the magic, right? So here it is. So start path. Da, 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 da. There it is, right? And then it's just gonna wrap over like that. What if we want it to actually start here and then animate out? Well, that means we need to play with the end path like so. We can see that wrap down like that. Okay, so what do we do? We add a keyframe, bam, there you are, keyframe, done. What did it do? It added this lovely keyframe right here. Scrolling in, uh, and then we will just take that up to 100. Now we can see it animate like so, and you guys get the idea. <sighs> Cool. There we got it. Super slow, because I just want you guys to see this. Okay. Cool. All right. So uh, let me go ahead and animate this this way. Let's animate it back as well, just for fun. So we'll go up to 15 seconds and uh, we'll take this back. You know what, no, let's go ahead and adjust this all. Uh, we're gonna make this all sh a lot shorter. We'll do five seconds. I just wanna change this from 15 to five so we're not waiting so long for the render, right? Right in here, we could take this end back down to zero or we could crank up the start. So let's add a keyframe, boom, there it is, right? Keyframe's gonna stay where it is. But now that the start, it's gonna kind of chase it. So now it's gonna go ahead and chase it to the other side. Now, if we watch this, we can see it go up, it connects, and then it goes back down the other way. Another thing I typically would do is grab all these keyframes, right click, and then do a, an easy ease, right? Here's our easy ease. That's gonna make it nice and smooth because I want it to kind of slow down right there slow down when it completes the illustration and then uh, and then continue on, okay? All right, so you guys get the idea, right? We can see what's happening here. We can jump in here. We can copy these keyframes. We're gonna, we're gonna change this, this uh, stroke, because I get it, it's ugly. We'll change this back down to two. And let's just start pasting this everywhere, okay? So what happens if we go to, uh, this eye, for instance, right? Here's this lovely eye. Come in here, Command V, hit U. U expands the currently added keyframes or whatever keyframes are there, and we can see that draw on. See, that's it, draw on and then draw off. So let's do that for everything. Selecting it all, V, boom, done. Oops, I'm closing things. I'm using shortcut keys without having the right panel selected. But now we can go ahead and see this animate, all of this animate on and then back out. Cool. Does that make sense? I'm just gonna have this full screen, drink my coffee and all that good stuff. So, this is a case where it's just, hey, this is just, this is After Effects magic. This is Adobe magic that makes our life easy, right? Because we know as a designer, our goal is to grab eyeballs. I could do that by, you know, making an illustration. And if my goal is to grab eyeballs, like why don't I just turn it into a video? Because we know video gets more engagement than just a still image. So you guys get the idea. Okay, so Mallory says, I created, oh yeah, and I did that kind of fast. So let me just kind of answer your question there, right? All I did is copy and paste these keyframes. So if we take a look inside of, uh, let's go to the lips, for instance, we'll just call this lips. Right over here, all I did is copy and paste. So if we go into trim pass, we can see my trim pass. We can see those exact same keyframes. So all I did, and let me just remove this, go up here, grab these keyframes, click and drag, copy them. Make sure you grab them all. 
Command C, go to the lips layer, Command V, and now we've pasted them into this new lips layer. We'll twirl this down. And again, the big shortcut, because as you start twirling things down, it gets kind of, takes up too much room. Just hit U and it will reveal all of the um, keyframes for that layer. But the reason I did this, and there's probably some other ways that I could do things to kind of link things together, but now I can kind of control how the lips come in. So I can go ahead and take this and say, hey, you know what, let's have the lips come in a little bit sooner so it's not so like procedural. Like I would start to stagger all these frames. Again, selecting everything, hit U. You could see everything develops right here in the center. I kind of like that, but I would start staggering things out because I think it's more interesting when part of the illustration is complete and uh, maybe not the other part, okay? So I've just kind of staggered things a little bit. Stagger them a little bit more, make it a little bit more drastic. And then we'll hit play. Right? You guys get the idea. Cool. <laughs> All right. You guys get the idea. Cristiano, I wanna welcome you, my friend. From there, we could render this out and do all that fun stuff. The cool thing is, by the way, remember I'm using Overlord. You're thinking, okay, well, can I edit this back in Illustrator? I don't actually do this a lot, but let's take this, let's go to Window, we'll go to Extensions, we'll go to Overlord, okay? Which is quite an quite a ambitious name for a, for a product, Overlord, like, wow because it pushes things over to other apps. So uh, push selection to Illustrator. Let's do that, boom. It pushes it back to Illustrator. This is just my current, uh, let's actually cut that. Let's do this, let's go file new. Jump in here and just have a new artboard open. So now we'll go push to Overlord just to show you, it puts it on your current, in your current document, uh, like so. So from here, I can go ahead and, of course, use the power of Illustrator to make any changes that I want, right? Some things might not come in. So it's like, uh, for instance, if I change the width profile, like I was doing earlier, I change this width profile. Let's take all this, let's push it back to After Effects. And let me undo that, by the way. Wait for it, let's go back in. Oh, some other additional buttons that I don't usually use. Push the swatches, push guides, break symbols, again. Um, but let's just go back over. Ba -ba. Ah, wait for it. Where is my projects? Project panel. There we go. Boom. New one. 2000. 2000. There we go. Just made a new uh, layer comp. Because when I go, just to show you that as I do this and I push it back, it just, it's not going to bring in some of those features because they're just not supported in um, After Effects. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just by the way, uh, feel free to answer your question. If this was, if this was Photoshop, if I was using Photoshop, I can import that PSD and then it will import all of the um, layers. I can import everything as a composition. So just to kind of maybe get you excited for um, another stream I'm doing. Let's just go to this Futurism PSD. This one is not that complex. Ooh, let's take this one for instance. Oh, let's just go with this one. Uh, so import as footage or import as composition uh, as well. So you can retain the layer sizes, click OK and it's gonna bring everything in as if it's a PSD. So we can uh, do a number of things as it runs into them. But right in here, this is how it brings in a PSD. It only has two layers, by the way, um, but it'll bring in all those layers right in here in your layer comp and you guys get the idea. Cool, cool. 
All right, I don't know what else you guys want to know. I still have 10 minutes, so I'm gonna jump back into Illustrator and spend some more time there. But I also wanna show you kind of the final, if, if I could. Uh, here's the one that we were working on. This is the one, is this the one? This is the one that I think we made, which is only five seconds long, looks gorgeous. Let's open up this one. This is one that I've actually put together. This is the one that's just on Instagram. It's actually made up of a bunch of compositions. So I brought in all that line art, uh, put them on different layers, played with the time as well. And now you can kind of see how that looks. Uh, you get the idea. Okay. Ah, <sighs> pretty simple. Ava, I see you over there, Dennis. Awesome, what's up, Muriel? Awesome, people over on Facebook. Add an expression. Ah, I don't have time for expressions. Plus, the only one I know how to do is like wiggle. <laughs> so again, we'll, we'll save that for Jason's, uh, Jason's uh, audio and video masterclass is kind of where that belongs. I already feel like I'm, I'm jumping too much into territory that I don't belong in, but hopefully that's okay. Uh, we can see this piece that I've been working on, by the way, we have a number of brushes. So it's again, just adding more life to this. Let's actually increase this artboard size. And in fact, right up here, this is what I'll do a lot, is just hide the artboards all together and throw in some fun brushes. So we wanna make this look even more artistic or at least try some things, we can try some brushes. You are not gonna have all these, um, but you could easily have them all. All you need to do is open a brush library. So you have the artistic brushes um, and you can go ahead and add any one of these. Let's go add, add ahead and add artistic charcoal. You get the idea, okay? You guys know how this works. Hopefully you do. But if you don't, hey, that's why you're here. Look at how this changed it. Actually, I might have made it worse, right? Something like this, just a slight variance in stroke, right? See, see, see what that looks like? Just a little bit, kind of works out okay. Yes, I'm really excited about uh, After Effects 2. And again, I've only shown you one thing, that was just trim paths. And it's so easy that once you have that illustration, you can go ahead and you have those vector lines, you could do so much with them. All right, you can do a, a number of things with these. We have this version that we could do, that looks good. Let's just duplicate that layer this time, turn that off, right? Uh, let's say for instance, for all these lovely lines, let's bring it back. Some other things we can try, since this we just made a path, we can start to lay the things along this path, right? Okay, you guys ask it, what, what did I miss? What did I miss? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so cool. Mallory's into it. Uh, if I missed anything, just like let me know. Um, okay, so uh, right in here, we could go ahead and we can have a circle, for instance. Let's grab this circle. Let's give it a color. And this is getting a little, a little deep. It's actually not too bad, but just to kind of show you, we can we can do a number of things with uh, with these lines. So another thing we could do with these lines, uh, let's even you know maybe even do everything based off this this shape right here. Right here, these lines. Let's take this. I'm gonna do this really fast. Ba ba. Blend tool, bam, bam. You get how that works, right? We have the blend tool. We'll change it to specified steps of 200, right? And now we have this lovely blend, right? That will go from wherever to wherever, right? So we could actually blend this along the line that we have as well. So we could take one of these lines. Let's take this line, for instance. Okay, here it is. Let's copy it. Let's Double click and go inside of it. I'm gonna select this line. I'm gonna paste this in. Oh, that's, oh, you gotta select the whole line. I did not have it all selected. Select the whole line, copy, jump in, paste. And there we have this shape, right? Kind of bending along that path, right? Is it ugly? Yeah, it is. You're right, right? 
But again, this just kind of gives you some ideas of like what you can do just to kind of take things to the next level, right? We could already tell that this does need more steps. Let's take it up to 400, right? And we get this nice smoothness. What if we want the hair in front of the um, chin? Well, we'll go into uh, even advanced controls for blend and we'll go ahead and uh, reverse uh, front to back. And now it's reversed. And then we can also reverse spine. And I don't know what the difference between those two is. Uh, reverse spine. The spine is basically what I pasted in there. The front to back should be the first shape and the last shape. But you guys get the idea. Did I make it look that cool? No, probably not. But again, all this stuff is editable. So you can always jump in and change it as needed. Right? So that's what I would do. Select that circle, shrink it down like so. Shrek this, zoop, like that. There we go, you guys get the idea. Again, just playing with different ideas of what we could do since I had a couple extra minute. minutes. Cool, cool. All right, again, that's the, that's the other version. Luckily I kept this one since I don't know who said that they liked it. Uh, Caroline, did you? S Somebody liked this version, but have fun also making your own brushes, right? If I decide, hey, you know what? She kind of looks like, I want to kind of do an Adam and Eve sort of interpretation. Bam, let's do snakes. There we have this illustration made up of snakes. We get all these sharp shapes that I'd have to clean up, but uh, you get the idea. We actually have her made of snakes, which again, is did not come out exactly as I wanted. There, kind of see what's going on there. All right, Evan Abrams. Hey, is Evan here by the way? Evan is like the After Effects master, so who am I? Like he is the man, like I just, I, I like, I just, I love learning from, from him because he's amazing. Okay, so notice all I've, as, as I've added these custom brushes, I can also add custom widths to those brushes. So rather than having this really uniform, right, we can have it taper accordingly as well. Not quite noticeable in that version, but again, we can have fun with this. As I increase the size, you can start to see it a little bit better. Cool, all right. Uh, what else do I need to talk about? I can do the same thing with text. Right? If I wanted to add text to this, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, this interpretation is kind of interesting. Saturdays with Evan Abrams. Awesome. Huh. You guys get the idea. Uh, let's switch back over and make sure I have everything done here. So here's my line drawing. I played with it uh, quite a bit. A lot of times, just like don't don't forget to close your file because when you switch back to say your iPad, you might have a file conflict. So jumping back over here, there we are clicking, and sure enough, we have those right in here as well, and we can start to play with this some more. But. If we take a look at our layers, what all did I do? Just a recap. Oh, let's just turn all those on. Those are basically just a lot of uh, photos that I've just like outlined. It's not complex. Cool. All right, so uh, I'm kind of winding down. I think, uh, who do we have up next? I'm sure it's gonna be amazing, whoever it is, right? And, uh, I want you guys to be involved because we have T. White in the house. Ooh, portrait retouching for photographers. I think things always get interesting when you start mixing disciplines. So you take illustration and you start to mix it with photos, right? So this alone is actually kind of cool and is a whole other style that you might have seen out there on Instagram or wherever else, right? But this is sort of the idea of mixing photography and illustration is actually kind of a cool idea. Um, and that's kind of where creativity comes from is like mixing things that maybe, 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 maybe don't necessarily go together, but you make them go together. 
because you're creative. All right, so again, just kind of mix that stuff. I think this would kind of be kind of cool to, to do, so that might be my next step. Terry White's up next. Big thank you to him. It's going to be amazing, and uh, I'm, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm constantly learning from the guy, like, every single time. So I'm going to turn you over to that master. Join me later on, because I'm going to be doing a Photoshop master class. I might even pick up where I left off here, but I have a special... Uh, special agenda doing some retro futurism which is all about uh, is one of the design trends this year so thanks so much everybody appreciate you guys uh st stay stay safe out there and uh we will see you soon i'm gonna turn you over to t white uh and the schedule so thanks so much for watching everyone <laughs>